Uh, this lovely topic here of butterflies, as you can see here, I've called them winged beauties. The word butterfly actually refers just to the name given to one yellow thing that was seen many years ago. And because it was the colour of butter and it was flying around, it was called a butterfly. And that's where the, the name comes from, just one species. Uh, here in Australia, we have um, only 300 and what's the number now? Uh, 359 species of them. I'm going to show you these things first before I go, because people who are interested, you may want to go and get these for yourself later. This, the dictionary of butterflies and moths, beautifully illustrated all the way through butterflies and moths and at the back all about them. Each, each individual that's illustrated in here gives you the distribution, food, plants and everything in here. A wonderful book to have moths and butterflies. Locally, Butterflies of Australia, beautifully done and photographs of pinned specimens or painted specimens here showing you both upper wing and under wing because in many cases they are completely different and in here it gives you the text about where the there's a map of Australia showing you where they are found so that deals with the whole of Australia with WA we have a beautiful little booklet here which is available through the West Australian Insect Study and the Museum of WA. It's called Bring Back the Butterflies. And this particular book is uh, illustrated. It's got beautiful photographs, in, uh, paintings in here of, or pin specimens. I'll get a page of them in here. Showing you all the butterflies that you're going to find in WA. And each butterfly has what its food plant is and basically when you're allowed, basically going to see them, etc. And if you're lucky, please, if you're interested in butterflies, see if you can get Domino's butterfly thing, because this little thing which you can take into the bush has every butterfly in Australia illustrated. And it's all on one form. And it just beautifully, and this was put out by Domino many years ago. And as you can see, it's gone through quite a bit of tacky whatever. Anyway, that's basically those things. Now, people who want to study butterflies, uh, I don't need to do anything else. They are just absolutely beautifully coloured. The word, they belong to a big uh, family called Lepidoptera. Lepido means a scale like fish scale, and patera is a wing. And lepidoptera means these animals here, uh, the whole of their wings are covered with little scales. Under microscope, you can actually see them. In fact, what a lot of people don't know, it's almost like DNA. If you go and get a couple of these scales and put them under the microscope, you can now go to a book now, and that scale will tell you which butterfly it is. It's like a DNA reading. Um, they're, they don't live long. Anyone know why? The scales get broken off. As they hit plants and things, the scales get worn off. And after a period of time, they, the scales actually help them to grip while they're flying. And of course, that means that they are going to get damaged. And of course, if they get damaged, the bird's going to get them and they're going to be eaten. But the in, in, Incredible thing about the butterflies here, of course, is their particular life cycle. Now, just to show you what moths are. Butterflies, by the way, when they land, they can fold their wings over their body. Moths can't. Moths have to fold their wings down over their body. So moths fold down, butterflies fold up. So that's one of the difference. This one is the beautiful peppermint. I think it's up there, isn't it? The peppermint moth. Uh, this one's only found here. And this is your female. The male's pure white with beautiful green bars on. And uh, have you all heard of the peppermint tree? Agonis. It's caterpillars. 
eat the wood of the trunk of that particular tree. This, this is the wanderer butterfly. Would you believe it was introduced into Western Australia simply because the people who collected and pinned out butterflies as a, a hobby uh, didn't have any big ones. So they brought in the swan bush, which is now a declared weed, and uh, they introduced these. And of course, this one now is one of, and this one again, can you see the little dots here? That tells you it's a male. If the same thing is there without those dots on the hind wing, that's a female. R-rated girls. <laughs> this is where they're mating. Oh, by the way, when you saw that, uh, when the Kedron had a, there was a uh, rainbow bee-eater and a uh, parrot in the, in the bottom corner, was the rainbow bee-eater a male or female? See, you people are not using your eyes. You should see that those long spines out there, if the spines are very long, it's the male. If the spines are shorter, it's the girl. Well, next time they put it up, Kendra, see if you can show that. You know, this is how they mate. And then the female has to go and find a um, plant upon which to, which is their food plant. Here she is laying her eggs. She's laying her eggs on the food plant. And these eggs stay on there. Ants predate them. So quite a lot of these get eaten by uh, predators. Praying mantises will eat the eggs as well. And there are quite a lot of creepy, crawly little insects that will eat the eggs on here. So although the mother lays the eggs, the eggs are not sort of guaranteed to turn into ha or hatch out a butterfly. This is the food plant. They call it the swan bush. Or what was it, Michael? Cotton bush, cotton bush. The seeds inside here have got all hairs on them. And as you know, one of our plants called, uh, you know, all know the hibiscus? One of the plants that has got a flower like a hibiscus called gossypium. And its seeds have these hairs on it. And our machines can tear these hairs off and twist them all together. And we have what we call cotton. Nothing to do with this. But the hairs on here look like the hairs on the cotton plant. That's the food plant. This is your caterpillar. And for the youngsters here... How many legs does a caterpillar have? Ah, so you see it's an insect. You should be able to tell. How many eggs are the insect? Eight. No, 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 that's a spider. Six. All insects except... No, I'll have to go qualify here. <laughs> All caterpillars have six legs. Two, four, six. They're articulated legs. Two sections of the body are missed out, and then you have four pairs of prolegs, which are not legs at all, they're sort of helpers that help the caterpillar walk. And then right at the very end, you've got another couple. And if the caterpillar has these prolegs here, it crawls like a caterpillar. In some moths, they don't have these here, I've got these and these and that's when the caterpillar instead of crawling goes along like this and we call them the looper caterpillars because they haven't got any legs in the middle to help them keep their body up off there so six legs eight pro legs and two at the rear this is now getting ready it's been eating and growing and these caterpillars have to shed their skin you can actually see the legs quite easily here now. See those three? Three pair, four pair of pro legs and then one here. This is now getting ready. It's been eating, shedding its skin, eating and shedding its skin, getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it reaches full size. And then to pupate, these out of their mouth spin silk. And on the end of their body, they've got a little anchor called the cremaster and they hook that cremaster into the uh, silk and then they hang down like this. And then a miracle happens. Five minutes later, five minutes later, that becomes that. 
what it does it on its head which is the part hanging right down it starts splitting its skin here and like you rolling a sock off your foot the skin rolls off rolls off rolls off and ends up around here all tucked up tightly but underneath this skin is that and this is the chrysalis and now that caterpillar with let look what is where the legs gone this is this is the miracle this is the thing that was really incredible and then inside here what's left of the caterpillar melts the whole of its body and turns it all into soup and then rebuilds it slowly as a butterfly inside this chrysalis and when it's ready the chrysalis has got sutures on it where they can break apart and then out of this will come you can see the wings developing here beautiful all of this is happening inside here and this is the miracle caterpillar no wings funny legs pro legs uh, did it have feelers it had a biting mouth because it chews plant material and yet here does a moth a butterfly have biting mouth no it's got a drinking straw and all of this miracle happens inside this chrysalis and this is where unfortunately our education department needs a kick in the backside they do not have a nature study program for the primary school and these poor kids here go through the whole they never know anything about this and yet this is the miracle that goes on with butterflies out it comes pumps up its wings and at once the fluid gets into those black veins that you can see there the wings become full fully developed and then the butterfly has to stay there for about two hours while all the liquid goes hard so that it can now start beating its wings and becomes a butterfly so from that long funny legged biting mouth no feelers no wings this has come out of that incredible thing and this is the miracle that goes on with butterflies so that's the life history here now we come on to some of the ones that uh, are just strange things we have some uh, we don't have many palms here but we have introduced into Western Australia lots of palms people grow them you see them at people's backyards big palms with all their fruits on and a group of our butterflies called the palm darts this is the head of one of them and these palm darts are pretty clever they actually get a a palm leaf and to hide themselves because they're good to eat birds see them thank you and the caterpillar's gone to hide themselves they actually get onto a leaf and they actually pull the edges of the leaves over like this and then they put silk across over here and they hide inside the little little cubby hole and at night time they come out and I got photographs of this palm dart here <clears throat> and here's a palm dart uh, in our we've got six big families or we got sorry we've got six families of butterflies in Australia and this one belongs to the Hesperidae which are the palm darts alls I, I'll read you out some <laughs> some people can't believe the names that they've given uh, this particular group the Hesperidae where am I in here uh, the Hesperidae has 106 different butterflies like this 106 different species in Australia and these are the names given to the various ones in there they're called flats because they hold the wings flat darts palm darts which this one here is a palm dart skippers alls that's a w l s alls and grass darts so those six names are the names given to members of this big family the Hesperidae can you mention the flowery song so we know about what flowers to plant? Well, this is one of the verticordias, yes. Uh, at home, we have a very rare verticordia growing, ver verticordia stemosa. There are 100 species in WA. And by the way, for those that don't know, Western Australia has all the verticordias in the world. And only one other place has one. And that's the Northern Territory. 
it's got one of ours. We've got it, but it also extends in, into the Northern Territory. We've got a hundred species, and uh, at home we've got this very rare one, which is called Verticoris stemosa. And the other day, you talk about your new Holland honey eater. We had the new Holland honey eater coming and getting the nectar because these flowers are drooping. They're out flowering now. Anyone know why they're drooping? Because it rains! <laughs> But if you've got your flower up, all the nectar's going to get washed out. So that's why practically all the flowers who flower in winter are all pendulous so that when it rains, the nectar just doesn't get washed away. And I saw this New Holland honey eater coming in, drinking the nectar out of all of these flowers. It was really wonderful. You know, that's a palm dart here. Oh, do they ever. And that lantana is one of the best because lantana flowers last for yonks. <clears throat> this is another, well, I think the names, uh, this is another palm dart. The males and females of these, as you'll see sometimes later, the males and females are quite distinct, uh, completely different. You'd never recognise them as the same um, uh, butterfly. <clears throat> this shows you the upper surface. I think it's what it is, the palm dart upper surface. There's the under, what's underneath. So completely different top and bottom of the wing patterns. Common swift moth. Now all of these belong to this big family called Hesperidae. As I told you, 106 species in them. And these are around here in the hills. And of course, you, you've got to know what month it is to go out and look for them. And that's where, where's my little book here? That's where this book is invaluable. This is West Australian. And it tells you the month that they're all found out. There's the western grass dart, and uh, oh, just just beautiful. Most of these are photographed in our backyard at uh, Sawyer's Valley, so you'll be able to see those wherever. But you've got to be interested in them to get anywhere near them. This is the Skyron skipper, uh, another one of the grass dart group, palm dart group area, and these are rather funny butterflies, although they fold their wings up. They don't fold the wings together as most of the other ones do. They sort of have them up, but they're usually forewing and hindwing a little bit separate apart. So there's your skipper. And here's another one of the skippers on a Dasi, uh, is that Dasipogon. I think it's the little ball one, the Dasipogon. And of course, they're drinking the nectar. By the way, these, as a caterpillar, the caterpillar has biting mouth with jaws. These have got a drinking straw, and the drinking straw curls up. So when you, uh, I think one of the butterflies I see, you'll see this curled thing in here. That's the drinking straw. When it wants to drink, it just unwinds it, pokes it in, sucks up, and then curls it all back up again. And that's what he's doing here on this Dassey Pogan. Uh, another one of the skippers, alls, grass dart type of ones. <coughs> Weren't we lucky? In 1969, my wife and family moved from here up to Papua New Guinea, and we stayed at uh, Kokoda. And for those who don't know...